Well, I mean, this is so, I so exciting, ladies and gentlemen. Here we are in Adelaide. Well, I'm the only person in Adelaide at the moment, Adelaide United fans, because there's no football on at the moment. So what a great time to catch up with some former Adelaide United greats. On the screen right now, you can see a man who played 48 games for the club and scored one goal. A man who played 19 games and scored two goals. And a man who played 130 games celebrated a penalty like he scored a goal, went back and took it, scored the goal, and it was a goal. Please put your hands together for former captain John McCain, our former number 19, Jake Barkadash, and former number 14, Cameron Watson. No one's clapping because we're in isolation, which is great. The neighbours can probably hear me. Boys, what's going on? I'm going to start with you, Watto, because you look like you're in someone's backyard. What is going on? I am in my in-law's backyard. Um, nothing all good here. Jay Walsh just um, getting used to all this isolation restrictions. Um, hopefully we'll be uh, caught up to how you guys are going in Adelaide. You seem to be ahead of the curve. But um, yeah, just enjoying the sun while it lasts before winter kicks in. Um, and yeah, can't complain about the weather today. Uh, Johnny, uh, let's just talk about the elephant in the room. And I'm not speaking about you because you've obviously blown out post-football. <laughs> 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 oh, no. What's going on over your shoulder there? Is that intentional or what? Oh, those, those things. Those things as well. <laughs> you didn't um, see just, those there, eh? Yeah, we're just in my office, Joe. I've got a couple of Socceroos jerseys. Proudly Are they signed played. jerseys from someone else? <laughs> no, see what? I play for the Socceroos. So they're ah. <laughs> how, many, how many caps, John? How many caps? No, we won't go into that. But isolation, Joe Walsh, is difficult at the moment quite difficult as uh, as everyone else is aware but we're trying to stay stay mentally I guess okay at the moment it's it's a challenging time for everyone but myself and the family are getting through it mate up here in Bris Vegas all right so you're in Brisbane what are you in Melbourne and Jakey you are also in Melbourne as we speak is that right yeah correct in the BIC mate big Victoria Okay, so uh, let's start with you, Jakey, because obviously after Adelaide United, um, Johnny continued to play football. Cameron, we know you spent a bit of time at the Newcastle Jets and over in India as well, but JBD, we didn't really hear much what happened with your football career afterwards. So do you want to talk us through it? Because for the people who don't know, you've gone into to business and, and turned your attention towards other things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it was a, something I didn't really preempt going into my football career to be coming out of it so young, but... Um, I guess I just had a had a bit of a I kind of fell out of love with the game a little bit at the time, probably towards the end of my time at Adelaide, and then I had a lot of injuries as well, um, which were kind of haunting me in my body, um, which I was trying to get back on my feet for sort of the next twelve months after that contract, trialing overseas and things like that, and um, just kept kind of hitting roadblocks with my body. So I ended up coming back to Melbourne um, and playing in the NPL for for a season or two, and uh, kind of really. Yeah, similar experiences in my body wasn't feeling the best and also just from a motivation standpoint started to experience other things in life like like business and um, I guess being able to do some more things that I initially could never do being so committed to football from a very young age um, which I started to really enjoy so um, yeah currently I'm working at a, a tech company in a in a sales um, executive role which is really fun um, learning a lot about it and probably something I didn't think I would enjoy um, whilst playing football. So that's um, no, been good. Johnny, your job's been pretty full on at the moment, working for the PFA, obviously, during this time with, with players all around the world, not sure what's going on with their, their leagues, their individual contracts, their family situations and stuff. So I'm sure you didn't expect to be dealing with something like this working for the PFA so soon. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's been a, a really challenging time for, for, for a lot of players, not only in Australia, as the well-documented suspension to the league currently but but overseas it's it's in exactly the same um, situation with every single league suspended some have been cancelled players unsure about their contract situation whether it be the remainder of this season their contracts for next season whether they can come home or not with the lockdowns and obviously the restricted travel so it's been a it's been a really full-on time at the moment actually Jay Walsh with with obviously in the world but in terms of my work and working with the PFA and the football side of things it's, it's also been um, a really challenging period so that, that, that's why we're here we're here to support the players and that's the pretty much the notion of why the PFA was, was founded to support the players and this time right now we're, we're seeing a, a, a massive reason of why why we exist there's so many challenges that the players are facing 
day to day and, and the general population are as well. So it's um, it's been really challenging, but I'm hopeful that we'll get through this in a couple of months' time and there'll be a lot more football to be played. It'll be a different looking football, I think, on the other side of this COVID-19 epidemic and, and what it looks like. But um, I'm confident that there will be a league, both here in Australia and, and majority of leagues overseas, and there'll be plenty of Australians playing in those leagues. Hey, what's it like for you, Otto? Because as I mentioned, you went over and you, you played for the Jets for a bit, you went over to India, but you're coming back playing in Victoria in the, the, the local league now where you would have gone into this season knowing that you had a guaranteed wage, you would have forecasted for that, and then you, your job on the side. So budgeting and things like that, um, how does that impact you? Yeah, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been quite challenging uh, considering I think we were when um, you know, our leagues kind of got cancelled and all the member feds you know, decided to stop the whole way through the things like three weeks from the start of the season. Um, but yeah, very challenging for, you know, a lot of boys because a lot of boys come out here, especially that are younger and want to, they got ambitions to go and play in the A-League uh, and they don't really have full time jobs um, away from football. So I guess it'd be a lot challenging for them. A lot of boys that have come out from overseas as well, they find it hard to get jobs. And uh, for myself, I've been lucky enough to be in a job at the moment where we've continued to work uh, and the business is kind of, you know, it's, it's going relatively strong. Um, so at the moment, I'm considerably lucky, but I guess as we've found out over the last couple of weeks that you just got to kind of play it day by day, week by week, and just kind of listen to what the authorities have to say and then just kind of go off that. So at the moment, you know, it's in touch wood that we can, uh, can keep working and then Hopefully, as Johnny said, um, you know, kind of get back to playing football and watching football as you know as soon as we can. All right, this could go on forever, and we don't want it to because we uh, we want to keep this short and sweet, boys. All right, quickly now, both JBD and Watto, did you play under Johnny? Was he your captain? <laughs> yes, yes, he was. It's a political question for me. Um, yes, at some at one point, he Johnny was, was a leader in the dressing room when I was there. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now the reason why I ask because um, you boys, uh, and I'm, I'm very fortunate to know, you boys represent a really good time, probably the best time at, at Adelaide United for yourself in your playing careers. The, the group that you boys were associated with, um, it seemed to be not just on the field that you really love spending time with one another, but off the field as well. And culturally, the club was in the, the best way that it was. Um, do you all agree with that? 100%. Um, you know, the group, on the field, off the field was um, during that little period of time, Johnny, when Johnny came in and that influx of plays over that two or three year period, JVD was there um, as well. Um, I don't think I've been, I haven't been in a better dressing room um, in my playing days. So it was, it was really enjoyable. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. Jay Walsh, it, it was good. It was good times, you know. It was, uh, I mean, when we break it all down while we play football, it's because we enjoy it. You know, we enjoy playing with, our mates, we enjoy it because the game's great. And when you start becoming a professional and get paid, sometimes you, you deviate away from, from that core principle of just enjoying the game. And we had a really good change room. Um, the banter was, was top-notch. There's a lot of us still good mates now. There's plenty of stories floating around. And, I mean, that's why I, I fell in love with the game because of the, the mateship that uh, created throughout that little journey, whether it be as a, as a local league player, whether it be as a professional, whether it be playing in Australia, overseas, wherever it might be, that's the, the one thing that I really miss about not playing professional football now is that mateship. And you're right, we're fortunate that during that period, we, we had a really good group of guys, some questionable coaches, I'll put it out there. <laughs> um, um, some, some, some really good guys um, that, uh, that we still stay in contact with to this day. <laughs> Great. Your thoughts, JVD? Quickly, quickly. I think I think that was probably my... Um, I probably didn't realise it at the time how good of a dressing room it was because it was only my second sort of changing room that I was in from a professional level. So the fact that uh, a core chunk of us have a strong relationship to this day um, probably exemplifies that. But, you know, even, even on the field, we had, a, we had a really good team. I mean, we won a lot of games in those couple of years that I was there and we're in finals runs and Asian Champions League runs every year. So um, we didn't maybe capitalise on silverware, but we were there, thereabouts every year. So it was, it was a really good time. Uh, anybody who wants to uh, Wikipedia and align the time that John McCain played and who the coaches of the club were then, you can do that and um, make up your own mind to who he's referring to. I have no comment because I still work for the club. Go United. Warrior. Don't say anything. All right. Um, all right. Work, so what I want to... You work for 18 clubs, Jay Walsh. Say again? You work for about 18 clubs. 
Yeah, that's true. And it was a great time. Like the, the time that you boys were there out of all of them, it was definitely one of the times. So uh, what I wanted to ask you is in relation to not just the club, but Adelaide, a lot of players probably have a preconceived idea about the city of Adelaide before moving o- over here and shifting their lives and, and things like that. And it seems that hardly any people leave the city actually disliking. And I know you all had an affiliation to the city itself. So do, do you miss certain aspects of Adelaide? I know what JVD misses, hey, JVD. No, nah, yeah, a lot of <laughs> lot of good friends down there, Jay Walsh, as you know. So, um, no, I, I miss Adelaide a lot. It was so, I mean, just the people there were, were so nice. It was a very similar feel to Melbourne, which is obviously my home um, in regards to sort of the cafe and restaurant culture. But just yeah, being so close to everyone and everyone kind of knew each other there, so you became pretty well connected with with really good people pretty quickly, which um, helped helped you settle. And I, I was lucky that I was one of the, I guess, the older boys of the team that, that very had old, yeah. a very old, had a wife and a couple of kids at, at, at the time. And then that first year I ended up having, my, my third child was, was born in Adelaide. So it was a, it's, a, it's a cool city for families. Like it's, it's you know, 10 minutes to the beach. I lived at Torrensville, which was close to, to Highmarsh. Um, easy to get to the beach, beautiful weather, no traffic, um, pretty simple life, but that's the way I liked it. So I ended up buying a house there and, and was prepared to stay, you know, but so as we all know, the football... <laughs> but as we know, the football journey takes us different places. So, but it was a, it was three years of, of oh, three and a half years of, of my life and my career that I, I really enjoyed. And, um, it's not a pissant town, Joe Walsh, it's not a pissant town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll echo what JVD and Johnny said. And I think people have a you know misconception of before going there just because it's considered a relatively small city just compared to the others. But um, you know, five five years there, you, you kind of um, you meet a lot of people, and as Jake said, you it's because it's so tight knit, you end up connecting well with people, and you meet a lot of people through your journey. And I think I fell in love with the place as well. You know, it's you got the best of both worlds. I don't know, there's not many places while well, well, I've been anyway. You can be such in such a good position to go to the beach, you know, five, ten minutes away and then be, you know, five, ten minutes away from training high marsh into the city as well. So um, always love going back, um, going to visit friends. So, yeah, not a bad word to say. Okay, now, boys, I very much appreciate your time. I'm going to wrap this up with one final question. We're going to try and get Tarek Elrich on from the Perth Glory over the next couple of episodes. But I need you to confirm something. And probably, Cameron, you are the best person to confirm this. But also, Jake, because you spent a lot of time with Tarek. And, and John, you are lived in the city. So, um, Tarek, one of the most finely sculpted athletes ever, but the worst diet of any athlete that you would see. Confirm or deny? Hundred yeah. percent confirm. Yeah, yeah, no brain up. I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a few Tarek Arich stories when it comes to diet. Jay Walsh and Kama, we used to regularly lunch with Tarek. We were kind of glued at the hip um, um, whilst I was there with him. But um, yeah, the first time I had lunch with him, we I think we went to it was an Afghan restaurant. We always used to go to a few of the players. Ozzy Malik used to take us there. And um, is this the Wash, the Wash Bakery? Might be that oh, one. Yeah. Bakery. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Tariq Tariq comes down and he has a, I think it was a one point five or two liter Coke Coca Cola um, <laughs> bottle, and I thought I thought he was getting it for the table. Um, I thought I'd just again, but no, mate. He just opened the top and drank the whole thing himself throughout lunch. <laughs> no, that's what I thought. Jesus, uh... man, protein is uh, not so bad after all. I can um, I can honestly say Tarek's like you know top foods would have to be a bottle of Coke in a large um, container, uh, chips, hot chips, choc tops, um, <laughs> which are ice cream, and you can never eat one at a time. Uh, there is probably his three favourite foods. I'm not going to go past them three. Yeah. Right. Well, boys, uh, very grateful for your time. And I think in all seriousness, we can have a laugh and stuff. But one of, one of these things like right now that we do shows that the time that you all spent together at Adelaide United, the, the friendships and the bonds that have formed from it. So um, no matter what happened on or off the field with you guys while you're wearing the, um, the, the red shirt, Johnny, we know you got sent off more than anybody at Adelaide United in your time there. No, Bogues. No, 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 okay. Bogues. Oh, okay. We'll get on. We'll get on uh, Nigel Bogart over the next couple of weeks. I'm not sure if he has Wi-Fi in his caravan in Newcastle, so we'll have to suss that out. 
But um, you all have a special bond that Adelaide United has uh, brought you guys together in football. So good luck with isolation. Um, and if anybody wants to crowdfund Cameron Watson so he can not hold his iPhone like this for the whole time <laughs> next time we do this and use a laptop, it would be great. I'm enjoying the backyard, Jay Walsh. Come on, mate. Do you no, have let's... a laptop? Do you, want? Do you got a laptop? Yeah, you got an iMac. Got a Mac, mate. Air. MacBook Air. Is that one of those big, like the colourful ones that you got in the 90s? He wouldn't no. be able to fit his head in. Oh. That's true. <laughs> Boys, thank you very much. Take care. We'll catch up soon. Cheers, yeah. pal. See ya. Oh. <laughs>